Thank you, uh, Speaker. Today's, today's statement from the Minister of Finance represents nothing more than a pre-election Hail Mary pass from an out-of-touch government saying anything to cling to power. The minister has doubled down on what they I'm disappointed. For all intents and purposes, with a few exceptions, it was quiet here for the delivery. It shall be quiet for the response. Carry on. Thank you, Speaker. The minister has doubled down on what they've done to Ontario's books. None of the valid concerns raised by the Auditor General or Financial Accountability Office have been even remotely addressed today. The Auditor General has, for two years in a row, refused to sign off on this government's public accounts. La vérificatrice générale pour deux ans the Auditor General has refused to sign the books of the Ontario government. Deficit the Liberals have reported for 2016-17. Auditor General Bonnie Lysak says that's, quote, significantly understated, and it's actually $2.4 billion. Quote, the legislature and all Ontarians must be able to rely on the province's consolidated financial statements to fairly report the fiscal results for the year. The auditor goes on to say this year they cannot do so. Quote, Last month, the auditor revealed the real motivation for how the Liberals are restructuring the so-called Fair Hydro Plan and the way they are to keep borrowing costs off the books to present a rosier financial picture than what is reality. The accounting proposed by the government is wrong. This is a quote. And if used, would make the province's budgets and future consolidated financial statements unreliable, said Bonnie Lysak, after the report was tabled. The financial accountability officer doesn't believe the numbers either. In May, the FAO's spring outlook projects, quote, continued Ontario budget deficits over the next five years. Les gens de la responsabilité financière... The BRF doesn't believe either the numbers uh, by the government and his office estimates that uh, the deficit will be effective in the next five years. The FAO cast further doubt on the government's numbers, saying its debt reduction claims were based on, quote, unlikely assumptions. Just a month later, the FAO, in the long-term budget outlook, took further issue with the government's debt claims, stating they are billions of dollars <laughs> off the mark. In this fall economic statement, the government is reacting in advance to the tens of thousands of upcoming job losses when Bill 148 is implemented. Today's measures aimed at small businesses are a pittance compared to what's required to keep them viable, let alone competitive. It's literally a fraction of the impact this sector will be hit when Bill 148 hits them. Here's one example, a small restaurant in my riding will be hit with $152,000 just for the increase in salaries. Their annual profit is well under $100,000. So a 1% savings of their profit is peanuts compared to the increase. It's insulting. In fact, with the additional costs, there will no longer be any profit for that company to be taxed. It doesn't matter what the rate is, Speaker. Speaker, this government sold off Hydro One to the detriment of ratepayers to gain one-time money to artificially fluff up their revenue numbers. They discounted 60,000 people from Hydro last year. Disconnected. They're disconnected. They told a student struggling during the current college strike to, quote, just go on welfare. This is the Premier's version of fair. Actually, it's heartless, liberal self-interest at its worst, where there's one set of rules for the Liberals and their friends, 
and another set of rules for the rest of the people in Ontario. <laughs> Speaker, the people of Ontario see this for what it is, nothing more than a cynical re-election ploy. Thank you. Thank you.